Before this award show even started, I was talking to Michael Buckley and I said, this is going to be the best Grammys ever. And he totally agreed with me. And then at the end, we both disagreed. But here we are, the 51st Annual Grammy Awards Recap and Review 2009. The show kicks off with you 2 who I love, even though I think Bono has a little bit of a god complex. And the performance was quite disappointing. And it further develops my theory that the problem with bands like U2 is that they think they're so good that they can take something shitty and make it golden. Uh, and they can't. But once they were done, Whitney Houston comes out, and ah, oh, she is such a diva, and I heard she's back to like 90s Whitney, you know, no crack Whitney. Yeah, it's Bobby Brown Whitney. It's it's Hi Whitney, who takes her time out instead of giving the awards away to thank Clive Davis and have this look in her eye like, what am I doing here? She was a hot mess. But hey, best R&B album went to Jennifer Hudson. Oh my God, tears shed. The show was saved for me at that point. I was like, okay, we just got you know the little bad bumps out of the way in the beginning, and so now it's awesome. And Jay Hud got up there, and she was so thankful and so grateful. And she even gave props to Whitney, which she did not need to do. And so I just love Jennifer Hudson so much. And we fly backwards onto the bumps, and we're here with The Rock, who tries to be funny. Save all that material for the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards you're hosting, where they'll just laugh at anything. We can tell if it's a bad joke or if it's something not worth laughing at. If Dwayne Johnson pumped up the crowd as much as he thinks he does, the dude would be bigger than Jesus. I'll forgive The Rock because he was introducing my first husband, Justin, who had rather an off night in his lead up to the performance. Um, the general store selling bait and burgers? WTF are you talking about, Justin? Just sing. Justin, Al Green, and Boys to Men? Did someone dig up their corpses and bring them to the Grammys this year? Whatever, it's a lot of good names. Well, two good names and then three names I'd forgotten about for 10 years. And I'm thinking this is gonna be a great performance. Um, I'm gonna say that it was a shit show. I love shit shows and it was great names up there, but it was definitely a shit show. Okay, I was very excited now because Coldplay was coming in. Coldplay, I think, can pump up a crowd really well and they're just so into their audience and their music. Chris Martin, the piano, which is always good. And he's doing his thing and then Jay-Z comes out. I think if you add Jay-Z to anything, it's fucking amazing. His lyrics, like, were so good and it was such a good collaborative performance and then we get Viva La Vida and I was hooked and I was like okay we're picking right back up again. We get Keith Urban coming out introducing Carrie Underwood and I liked how he said this girl used to open for me. Yeah he'd be lucky now if he got to open for her. Her performance was so amazing, loved it and then to present best album we get Leanne Rimes and my girl Cheryl Crow. She was the third concert ever I'd went to in my life so I was very happy to see her be up there. Of course it goes to Powerhouse Sugarland. Uh, love them, love their song. I've loved them ever since they did that crazy little duet with Beyonce, so more power to you, Sugarland. Duffy and Al Green come out, which is an unexpected combination, but their voices blend so well together. I would buy a CD if they put together one. And in giving out Song of the Year, Viva La Vida Coldplay. Here's what I have to say about this. Of course they were gonna win. They win everything. They are like the 30 rock of the music industry. They win everything. I appreciate them and I think they deserve to win, but they're not my first choice. I just have a real quick question. Who else is surprised Kid Rock is still around? After 2000, I thought I'd never hear from him again, but he's still here making music. And you know, normally I really love medleys, but this one, pfft. No, not so much. Oh my god, fangirl moment! Miley and Taylor Swift coming out, the best friends! Um, they did such a wonderful job, beautiful girls, beautiful voices, so it was just so cute and I loved it. Oh my god, the Jonas Brothers out there with Stevie Wonder? Epic, 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 epic. It was fepic. It was... Amazing. Oh my god. First burning up and then superstition. I was cheering and clapping and crying and I was just a hot mess all over it because it was fepic. Might have jizzed in my pants. Keeping the fepicness going, Blink-182 coming out being like, we're together again, we're making albums. Shit, Dude Ranch is one of my top five favorite albums of all time, so bring it on, Blink-182. I am ready to have you back. Katie, Katie, Katie Perry. Oh, Katie Perry, what can I say about you? If only you could sing live. This is the part where I'm gonna read you directly from my notes. Oh no, fucking cocky Kanye. Oh, thank God he's not talking, he's performing. P.S. WTF with his hair. Seriously. The person that did win Best New Artist was Adele, who my friend Steven today turned me on to. She is amazing. If you haven't checked her out, you must. And she is the perfect winner for Best New Artist. Someone that not a lot of people have heard of, but has a good fan base that's ever growing. All you JB fans out there, calm down. JB is too big to win an award like that. Like, no offense to the people in that 
category or Adele herself. You are great. You are amazing. You deserved it. But JB is at a status now where if they got Best New Artist, people would be like, they're not new. They're established. So it's understandable. After that, we got the performance from Kenny Chesney. Beautiful man. Beautiful voice. It's even better during sex. That's right. I've had him. Or he's had me. Just kidding. Let's just move on. Record of the year went to Please Read the Letter by Alison Krauss, who I love from her work on Whiskey Lullaby, and Robert Plant, who looked very, very pedo. Creeped me out. The Queen Latifah comes out to introduce M.I.A., who should have been in the hospital getting ready to give birth to a baby, not jumping around performing on stage, and the rap pack singing a song, Swagga Like Us, or something like that, and they went all cutesy doing black and white in the beginning. Don't be cutesy, just perform. The performance and the song and it all, I was rather underwhelmed by it all. Sir Paul McCartney performing, and Dave Grohl was on drums, and... Oh my god. Paul McCartney is amazing. Amazing performance. Amazing voice. Loved it all. Then we get to the performance, which I had very big expectations for, Sugarland and Adele. And it was two great performances. And another majorly fepic moment, Justin and T.I. Oh my god. They need to make an album together right now because I will buy 50,000 copies of it. I am not joking you. It was majorly, majorly fepic. Here's another point where I'm going to just read from my notes. So sick of the Grammy chairman, blah, blah, blah. STFU and sit down. I'm watching for the music, not your pontificating. Then we get the tribute to the Four Tops, which was amazing. Then we move on to my mother's first husband, Neil Diamond, doing an epic performance of the song Sweet Caroline. Big shocker upset of the night, in my opinion. Album of the year went to Alison Krauss and Robert Plant for that country song. Last year it was a jazz song. This year it's a country song that I didn't like. Hey Grammys, next year let's give album of the year to a song and album that's good and that I listen to. Okay, thanks, bye. Then Stevie Wonder closed out the show, ending us on a high note after many low notes. My goodness. Huh, <sighs> shit show Grammy Awards. Oscars, I'm counting on you to bring us out of the funk we've been in in this award show season. See you all in two weeks.